All right, so I've got the project open in VS Code. I've also got the terminal running here. So our lightweight web server is in the background. Plus our TypeScript compiler is in the watch mode. It's looking for changes. And when it observes a change in a file, it will transpile it into JavaScript. And then the browser sync will kick in and automatically refresh the browser. You're gonna see this in a second. So back to VS Code. In Angular 2, each of the building blocks I talked about, like components, directives, and routers, are plain TypeScript classes. And that's one thing that I love about Angular 2. The API is much simpler and cleaner. So I'm gonna start by creating a class. So right-click, app, new file. I'm gonna call it courses.component.ts. Note the naming convention. So we start with the name of the component, like courses, then dot component, then dot ts. Okay, so to create a class, we start by export class courses component. What is this export here? In TypeScript, each file is considered a module. In each module, we often export one or more things like a class, a function, or a variable. In this case, I'm exporting courses component class, so it will be available to other modules in my application. Later, when I need this class, I can import it as you will see shortly. All right, so we have a class. Now, how does Angular know that this class is going to be a component? It looks for specific attributes or metadata on your classes. For example, to make this a component, we need to apply the component decorator to this class. A decorator in TypeScript is like an attribute in C-sharp or an annotation in Java. Many other languages have similar concepts. So first I need to import the component decorator from the core Angular module. Import, curly braces, component from, here's a string that specifies the name of the module. Angular 2 slash core. So in Angular 2 slash core module, we have a decorator called component. And here I'm importing it. So if you look at the source code for that module, you will see that they have exported this component there, so we can import it here. That's the idea. Now these decorators are functions, so we need to call them. At sign component, all decorators need to be prefixed with an add sign. I know this is a function, we just call it like this. Look at the IntelliSense. It's telling me that this function takes an object. So here's my object. And you can see the list of attributes that we can add in this object. In this video, we're gonna look at two basic attributes. One is selector, which is a string as you can see in the IntelliSense. I'm gonna call it courses. So this selector field here specifies a CSS selector for a host HTML element. When Angular sees an element that matches this CSS selector, it will create an instance of our component in the host element. So here I'm assuming the host element is an element with the tag courses. The next attribute is template. And this template specifies the HTML that will be inserted into the DOM when the components view is rendered. We can either write the template here in line or put it in a separate file. I'll get to that later in the section about components. So let's just display something very simple, courses. So that's all. We have built our first component, as easy as that. Now we need to add this courses element here somewhere. So first save this file and then go to app.component.ts. If you're using VS Code or Sublime Text, you can press Ctrl P on Windows or Command and P on Mac. And here you can type the name of the file in your project. So app.component.ts. If you're using a different editor and you don't have this shortcut, just go to the app folder and you will see app.component.ts there. 
All right, look at this component. It looks familiar, doesn't it? So first we're importing the component decorator from Angular. Here we're calling it. So it's a function that takes an object. And this object, we have two fields, selector and a template, just like our other component. And finally, we've got export class app component. So this app component is the root of your application. It's a view component that takes control of the entire app or the entire page. And here's a template for this view component. I'm going to change this and add courses element here. Now, if I run the application now, you're not going to see the courses component. Why? Because Angular sees this courses tag, but it doesn't know which component is responsible for that. Even though we defined a component in our application, nowhere we have referenced it. So Angular does not scan all your files to discover your components. It will only recognize the components that you have explicitly referenced. So here we need to add a reference to courses component so it can be discovered by Angular. So we supply a new field here called directives, which is an array. Inside this array, we specify any directives or components we have used inside the template for this component. Just to refresh your memory, we use directives to extend or control document object model. We can define custom attributes or custom elements that are not part of standard HTML. In this case, we used our courses component to define a new element. So every component is technically a directive. The difference is that a component has a template and a directive doesn't. So back to app, we need to reference our component here. Courses component. Now look at the red underline. Cannot find name courses component. And that's what I love about TypeScript. Compile time checking. So we need to import this courses component. Import curly braces, courses component from, what is the name of our module? For the custom modules that we define, we need to specify their path in the file system. So this file app.component.ts is in the folder app. Look, app folder, and here's app.component.ts. And here is our courses component. So they're both in the same folder. So back in app.component.ts, here I type dot slash, which means start searching from the current folder. And then the name of the module. So courses.component without TS extension. Save. Now let's look at our terminal. Okay, TypeScript compiler detected a change. So it transpiled our TS files into JavaScript files. And now if you go to Chrome, look, our courses component is successfully rendered on the page. Let's inspect the elements. So in the HTML, we have this my-app element, which is the host element for our app component. Let's have another look at our app component. Look, the selector is my-app. So when Angular sees my-app, it's going to put this template there, an h1 with the courses element. So back in Chrome, inside my-app, you see h1 and courses. And courses is the host element for our courses component. And inside that you see h2. But where is this root my-app defined? It's in our HTML. So back in VS Code, open the project folder, Collapse app, open index.html, scroll down. In the body, we have referenced my dash app. So Angular saw this and it rendered app component. Well, hello, it's Mosh here, your Angular 2 instructor. Thanks for watching my YouTube channel. This video you just watched is actually part of my comprehensive Angular 2 course for beginners. In this course, I will walk you through all the core concepts of Angular 2 
in a step-by-step -step and pragmatic way. By the end of watching this course, you will have all the necessary skills to build real-world applications with Angular. If you want to find out more about this course and the content I've covered, click on the link in the video description. With this link, you can get the course with a discount. Hope to see you in the course.